Hey, you guys doing? So this is GrowPotCheapy.com. I'm going to show you guys how to use my feedings charts here and feeding schedules. So you go up here to where it says feeding charts. And uh, I notice I changed the front picture. I don't think I've seen the update yet. It's now of my girlfriend. I took the photo. Pretty proud of it. I think it came out pretty good. All right, so feeding charts. So basically, you can just read these instructions right here. But the most important thing about my feeding charts is that, for example, Lucas Formula, is it's for cocoa. Most of these feeding charts are for cocoa. When you use soil, you have to do it a little bit differently. Uh, soil, you don't want to water every day, and neither do you want to water with newts every time you water. With soil, you want to wait until the top inch, like to that part of your finger right there. Just stick your finger in there. Um, you might want to like keep a certain hole always that you check, or you can use those little worm things that you can stick inside and they like are clay and they turn darker color when they're wet and when they turn dry it means hey time to water your soil again or you can do the, the, the weight test you lift the lift the bucket up and make sure that it's it's light enough well cocoa is the opposite of soil um, where a soil you want to let it dry out and then water and then you want to transfer between watering with water and then watering with with nutrients with soil that's how I use when I, when I when I use soil I water with nutrients and the next time I'll water with water then I'll water with nutrients and I'll water with water um, or you can use a Lucas, uh, Lucas formula, I guess, and maybe water every single time and just make sure you get a good amount of runoff. But you still have to let the, let the soil dry out. That part's very important. With cocoa, though, you want to water every single day with nutrients every single day. So one of the, the charts here is the Lucas formula, and this is the Floronova feeding chart. So this one here just uses Floronova and nothing else through the entire grow. Now, one thing I've noticed when I grow this way, um, especially with autos, is that the autos... Um, they, they run their normal lifespan. They don't get super huge. Um, you get pretty good yields, but they're not going to be super, super huge yields. I noticed when I switched over to using grow in the beginning of the auto's life until pre flowers and then switching to a into Floronova um, bloom, that they last a lot longer. Now, if you check out my Ghetto Grow, for example, in my Ghetto Grow, uh, the Auto Ultimate is already, I think it's 71 days old, and it's still like in the very beginning of its flowering stage. So it's going to go probably 90 to 100 days, something like that. Now, normally it doesn't happen. Normally auto uh, would finish, the uh, auto ultimate would finish in like day 85, 90 or so. But with this one, again, I fed it for the first like week or two with the root stuff and plus the grow. And then I've been thinking with grow all the way up until the point where I saw pre-flowers. Then I switched over to Floronova Bloom. Um, I'll show that feeding chart in a second, but that's the second one here. So how this one works then when you want to use the just the Floronova, nothing but Floronova, well, and, and CalMag, works really good. It's a really inexpensive way to grow because you only need one bottle of formula to grow the entire time. Uh, so what I do then is I water every single day. What this up here means, this is uh, nutrients per gallon. This is how many nutrients of each of these nutrients I add per gallon. So CalMag Plus, 2 milliliters per gallon. Floronova Bloom, 1 milliliter per gallon. And then how much I water with, two ounces of water. So that's how you follow the chart, right? Uh, sorry if it's kind of blurring out there. So this means day one through seven, day eight through 15. And this is what I do for each one of these. This is what I do for each one of these like that. So you go like this, day one through seven, CalMag Plus, two milliliters of CalMag Plus per one gallon of water. Day one through seven, how much flow number bloom? One milliliter per gallon of water. And this is uh, RO water. I highly recommend RO water. I mean, you can use... A different kind of water if you want to, but what I personally recommend, of course, is RO water. Next is how much do I water with? Days one through seven, I only water with like two ounces of water. Uh, sometimes only an ounce of water. They don't take very much water when they're young. In fact, usually day one through seven, I have them inside of a, a four by four Rockwell cube. That's what I started doing. Um, I used to do a um, the smaller two by two. I think it's two by two Rockwell cube. Um, or one and a half inch, I mean, something like that. Anyway, um, the normal plugs, that's what I used to do it in. But now I like to grow in four by four because the first four inches is very, very important. And I'm actually going to do a, um, a test where I grow it in a Rockwell cube and wait until the roots actually reach the corner and start to air prune off and then take that and transplant it. Um, I'm, I probably will try that with a regular. And I'll probably try it with an auto too to see what happens. But the last auto I grew, I, uh, the auto ultimate, I grew in a four inch cube and I kept that four inch cube inside of a humidity dome, that way it doesn't dry out too fast. And every day I watered it with this amount right here. Except I use this feeding chart, I'll tell you that one in a second. And I just fed it with like you know an ounce or two of water every time I watered it, and I watered it every single day. 
And that was just to keep the rock wool uh, moist and to kind of pull some of the other water that was in it out of it. All right, the next thing you do is day 8 through 15, and you just read down for each one. So Kalmak Plus and day uh, 8 to 15, you see a Kalmak Plus stays the same all the way through um, from beginning to end. It sounds crazy, like, oh, my God, how can you give a seedling that? But literally, I start doing this the second that my seedling is popped out of the rock wool and has and has that um, set of, of leaves on it. That is um, the set of, of true leaves on it. That usually happens for me for day one or day two. I don't do it when it just has the seedling leaves, those little round leaves like, you know, that don't look like, they're non, the false leaves are not true leaves. But the first set of like true, like the like little spike leaves that come out of that, um, then that's the one. Oh, come on, focus already. There it goes. That's the one that I start to use. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. I got to go like that, I guess. Anyway, that's the one where um, I start feeding. Anyway, so that's why I consider it like day one, really. Now, day 8 to 15, I still use 2 milliliters of Calmac Plus. For Nova Bloom, just go across, down across. That's how that's how charge works. So you just go across here and here. So day 8 to 15, for Nova Bloom, 3 milliliters per gallon of water. How much water for that day? 8 to 15, right there, bam, one fourth gallon or less. Uh, it doesn't take very much water. This is at this is at, at this point. I put the rock wool inside of cocoa, or inside of um, or inside of rock wool cubes. I like growing that way as well. And you can see the, the different results and, and some of my grows. So they come out really good. And I water I water that way um, with about one fourth of a gallon or less, just enough to get just just to, um, I don't I don't try to get runoff at this point. The plant's too small, so I'm just trying to keep the rock wool moist. So I just water around the rock wool. I water the rock wool a little bit, and then I water around the rock wool on the cocoa so that it just stays moist until the next day. Uh, basically, if I notice it getting too dry, too fast, then I water it with a little bit more. I just water with enough just to keep it moist. That's it. Uh, that is to last until I water it next time. If it's super dry the next time I need to water it, then I know I need to water it with a little bit more to keep it moist longer. Also, before I even transplant uh, and put the rock wool cube in the cocoa, I water the cocoa with this right here with this amount and I water it really good to where it's so totally saturated. Um, it's very important to do that. All right. So day 16 to finish. Then you can see this is the easiest way to grow. I grew, I grew this way for years and it's super, super easy, very effective, good results. So on day 16 to finish, this means, um, and this, this was for regulars or autos. So once the plant is 16 days old, now with regulars, you might want to wait a little bit longer. Um, because you know, auto flowers, obviously, they finish much faster than regulars. So a regular might take a while before it starts to get a decent size. So a regular, I might, I might wait until it gets a certain size, like um, before I start feeding it this amount. But definitely, this is the same with regulars. Uh, and then I, it, might, it might take a little more than, than day 15. So I might, be, I might feed with three milliliters of the Four Nova Bloom with the regular. Uh, that, that is a photo period, non-auto flowering uh, marijuana plant until it's like maybe a foot tall or so. And then it's like, okay, now, or a little under a foot tall, um, now I need to start feeding with the six, eight milliliters. Um, if I notice that the six, eight milliliters is too much for it, like the tips of the leaves get little burn spots on them, then I'll back it off, you know, back to maybe down to like five milli or four or five milliliters, something like that. So anyway, day 16 to finish, two milliliters of CalMag, six to eight milliliters of Flornova Bloom, and one-fourth to one-half gallon of water, and that's every single day until I get runoff, or until I get runoff. Some plants are heavy feeders, so some plants I have to water with, you know, a gallon a day. Right now, the Alda Ultimate is getting, uh, it's at 71 days old now, and I'm watering it with one gallon in the evening and a half a gallon in the morning. So it's, it's a super heavy feeder. So if you notice that your plant, that the cocoa is getting really light, you never want your pot to get light when you're watering with cocoa. You want it to always be heavy. You know, you want it to be nice and saturated. You want it to be like oversaturated. It, need, it needs drainage. It needs drainage holes, but you don't want it to dry out. So that's why I have to water it that way because it was drying out. All right, next feeding chart. You guys bored yet? <laughs> um, so next feeding chart here. Oh, man, this is uncomfortable right now. All right, so basically how this feeding chart works. Did I go down too far? I think I did on this thing. You can't see. There we go. So the Four Nova... Um, Let's see, try and move the laptop here a little bit, try to get everything on screen. Right, so this is the Floranova uh, feeding chart. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit more. It's having a hard time. I think it's because of the low light. Let's see here. Turn this down a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that. It's, uh, it is what it is. 
So the Four Nova series feeding chart is almost the same as the one above. The only thing that's different is I use Four Nova Grow and Four Nova Bloom. So how this goes, it's still notice that the CalMag Plus is the same all the way all the way through, right? So that doesn't change from the previous feeding chart. What does change is Bloom and Grow. So notice Bloom, one milliliter, three milliliters, six milliliters. That stays the same as what you see above for the amount of days, except you use six milliliters of Grow until it starts to flower. Now what I mean by start to, starts to flower is you get like all those little white tops everywhere. That's, that's what I call like the beginning of flowering, when you have all those white tops everywhere, like little white balls everywhere. Um, once you see those little white balls everywhere, then switch over and start feeding with Floranova Bloom, six to eight milliliters. Now I usually do six milliliters. I've been using, I've been doing six milliliters for the entire grow. Well, not the entire grow, but obviously I followed this right here to the T. Um, I switched over from six milliliters of grow to six milliliters of, of flower to finish. Now, I do give it a bloom booster um, like three or four times in its life. That's not something I put on the charts because it's not mandatory, it's not necessary, but I notice it gives me bigger yields, slightly bigger yields, um, and definitely gives me denser buds. So it's something to consider. The bloom food I like to use is it's called Monster Bloom. It's cheaper than Moab. Moab is pretty expensive. Monster Bloom is pretty much the exact same thing. And so I feed uh, rec what's recommended on the bottle. And I, but I don't do it every single day or every single feeding. I only do it like three times, maybe four times. Uh, so that's it. Um, and if I fill up a five-gallon bucket full of it and I don't use that five-gallon one day, which I don't, then it's getting bloom food for like two days until that bucket's gone because I put it right in that bucket with the rest of the food. I put it in last as well. And I think it's uh, per five gallons, if I remember, it's one teaspoon of Monster Bloom. Works really good, and it's pretty it's pretty inexpensive because it lasts a long time. So that's pretty much. You just look at the. This is always going to be per gallon, and then you go down here, CalMag Plus, and then go to the day. So CalMag Plus, day one through seven, two milliliters. Day one through seven, Floor Nova Grow, one milliliter. Nothing else is added. How much I water with is the same as up here. So that's why I didn't re-put it down there again. Um, I probably could, but it just takes more time for me to have to go and edit everything and all that and I'm just so busy right now on time with my new book uh, Benny Nature um, you know marketing and stuff like that and uh, work on my new course on, on gesture drawing and stuff like that and always making new videos so I'm just constantly always busy so I try I'm trying to update this as much as possible but it's it's difficult right so that's the same so you just you know day one through seven two ounces of water day eight to fifteen one one fourth gallon or less and so forth you, you'll get a you'll get a feel for how much water like in the very beginning of its life you only want to keep it give it enough water just to keep it moist until the next watering that's your only goal you're not trying to get runoff at that point you don't want to start getting runoff until like day 16 or older and then then you want to water until you get a little bit of runoff make sure obviously your pot's not too big for your plants all right next thing is cocos feeding chart now this is what i this is a, um, a nutrient i moved to recently I think it's made a difference in, 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 uh, in quality of the bud and the density of the bud and how, how much but how the yields, right? You guys can see some of the difference. So I did the, you know, but the grow and then um, like using Flow Nova Grow and the Flow Nova Bloom in the big room. And it works good. It works really good, actually. I, I got some really, really good yields off it. But the Kogos... Um, I think it's, it's by Ray Kogos. I think it works really good. Now, it's really hard to get. You have to actually call him to order it. You can order it on the site, um, but it's only part A and part B. I don't use that. I, I, I call him up personally, and I order the green liquid stuff, uh, the liquid form, not the powder form, of his all, his all in one. So it's, it's all in one, has everything you need, except for a couple things. And that's why I modify a little bit. So I noticed it didn't have any, any sulfur in it. And it doesn't have any magnesium in it. So to make up for that, Epsom salts. All Epsom salt is is magnesium sulfate, which means magnesium and sulfur. It, it's kind of lacking in the uh, PK when it comes to flowering. So I add Monster Bloom during the flowering stage. And uh, it really lacks in CalMag. It doesn't have any calcium either. So I add CalMag Plus um, at 2 milliliters a gallon. And... Uh, I usually don't do two milli two millis of gallon with my other feeding charts. You can; uh, it works good. I recently tried it; I like it. But I usually do ten milliliters per per um, five gallons of water is what I usually do when it comes to these ones up here. So, 
I know it says two milliliters here. I just didn't want to try to figure out, figure out the math and everything. It's two milliliters per gallon, so it works really, really good. But usually I do 10 milliliters per five gallons of water. So um, that would be like... I guess that is 2 milliliters per gallon. My bad. Sorry. I just recently started doing that. I used to do 5 milliliters per um, 5 gallons of water, and that would be 1 milliliter per gallon. Uh, that's what I used to do. But I recently changed it to 2 milliliters to see if there'd be any difference, and I, I like it better. Um, it seems the plants respond a little better to it. I've, I've gone back and forth over the years, and I'm always experimenting. Who knows? Maybe I'll go back to 1 milliliter. But for now, with RO water, um, even with the Floranova, series i really like the two milliliters per gallon so that's what i have there sorry about that sorry i confused myself there for a second so it's the same now this stuff here now now floranova actually has cow mag in it whereas this doesn't um kogos doesn't have cow mag in it and uh, i might have to bump it up to a little bit more than two milliliters per per gallon um i've been doing i think let's see i'm pretty sure i've been doing per, per two milliliters per gallon i'm just trying to think Actually, I might have been doing a little bit more. Let me think about it. No, I'm pretty sure I've just been, been I've been doing two milliliters per gallon, and it's been working pretty good. I might bump it up to three milliliters per gallon, only because it doesn't it doesn't show that it has any really well. It has a little bit of calcium in it, but it's not that much. It's not as much as like Floranova, so I might bump it up to maybe three milliliters per gallon. But I don't know. So far, it's working good at two milliliters. So I'll have to see. Um, I like to, I want to do the next grow though with maybe three milliliters per gallon, but it, it's the same way. One through seven CalMag plus two milliliters. Kogos one part liquid. This is the one part liquid green. It comes in its green liquid. You have to call up Ray Kogos. Just go, just look up Ray Kogos and you'll see his website there. And uh, you just call him up and say, hey, I want the one part uh, green stuff. He'll talk your ear off. Sorry, Ray, but you do. Uh, he will talk your ear off. So you just got to keep him on. Just keep saying, hey, I just need, I, I'm in a rush. I need to get this order. Um, you know, I really, I, you know, uh, just say, hey, the guy from Grow Pot Cheaply that you sell to, Neil recommended that I get the one part liquid series and I want that. That's what I want to grow with. He'll, he'll be like, well, what about the, um, you know, the B or whatever like that? Just say, no, I don't want it. I just want that one part. And the problem is it's like um, how he charge he charges a hundred dollars at a time. So he doesn't know how to use like the PayPal thing to uh, whatever he's, I think he's using PayPal. He doesn't know how to like set up different price ranges. I don't know. Um, but so what you do is you just order like, you know, three or four at a time or two at a time and he'll give you a good deal on it. Um, he'll he'll probably throw in a, a B for free because to balance it out because otherwise you're paying more than what it's actually worth. It's it's normally seventy five dollars including shipping, but you know you can't, it's kind of hard to get seventy five dollars to be even. Um, I'm not sure how many times you have to do seventy five to make it an even uh, even within the hundred. So be like because seventy five and seventy five, you know, would be um, one twenty five, so that's not even, and you can't just send him one twenty five. He doesn't work that way. He get, he does increments of hundreds. <laughs> I don't know why he does it that way, but hopefully he gets his shit together and makes it easier to order because it's kind of irritating. Right. So anyway, um, Epsom salts. I put not sure yet for day one through seven, and not sure yet through day eight eight through fifteen because I haven't used it all the way through a grow yet. I've only used it for for the for the really the bloom part of it. When the, or for actually not just a bloom, but from when like day 16 on. And in that case, I use 12, 12 milliliters per gallon of Kogos, uh, the one part liquid, and then one teaspoon of Epsom salts. And then of course the two milliliters of Comac Plus. And that brings me to a, a pretty good uh, um, EC. I think it's like 1.8, something like that. Sometimes if I over, over measure a little bit, it'll go up to like 2.0, no big deal. I just put a little bit of my... Um, water that comes from my dehumidifier back into the into the res and then stir it up and re-ph it if it needs to be and then that will lower the ph you know a little bit so the plants will slowly start getting less or not ph lower the ppms a little bit and that so um i, I do that a couple of times until it's done until the whole entire res is done so they start with the higher ppm at the beginning of the res, res's life and after as the days go down they get less and less pm as i put the regular water in there from the uh from the dehumidifier, which is pretty much, uh, the dehumidifier pretty much produces distilled water. All right, so um, flour to finish, two milliliters of CalMag Plus, 12 milliliters of Kogos on part liquid, one teaspoon of Epsom salt, and then uh, one fifth teaspoon of one, a teaspoon of, or five gallons of this from per five gallons of monster bloom. So how that works is, I just did it to, because um, one fifth teaspoon is kind of hard to measure. 
And so I wanted to show you what that equals out to when you do five gallons. Um, usually you make a five gallon bucket of nutrients at a time or more. Um, and so I, I just do it that way. I, I measure by the five gallons. I make like 25 gallons at a time in my res. And so the, uh, I do one, one teaspoon per five, per five gallons. And so when I do 25 gallons, I think I use two tablespoons, which is actually one teaspoon more than what, what I recommend here. But, you know, whatever. That's just how I do it. So. so for 25 gallons, I use two tablespoons, which is actually six teaspoons because there's three teaspoons per tablespoon. Right, so that's how I use my Kogos feeding chart. Uh, so far, I love Kogos. It's awesome. Um, it's around the same price range, even after shipping and everything, as buying. That's actually cheaper than buying a gallon of Foranova. It's not as cheap, I don't think, as the three-part series, which is I'm going to show next, Lucas Formula. This is using the three-part series by um, General Hydroponics. I used this for quite a while before I went to Foranova. Now, the main reason why I went to Foranova versus this stuff was because I didn't like the um, the mixing, <laughs> having to mix the two things all the time. Because you have to mix the micro and to mix the bloom. I never, I never used the grow part of it um, because I always use the Lucas Formula with the three-part series. I think when I first started growing with it way back in the very, my noob days, um, <laughs> when I was growing in an apartment, I was the manager of the apartment complex. It was kind of funny. And I was growing in the apartment in a little tent, little 4 by 4 tent, uh, 4 by 4 by 7 tall. And yeah, I got some really good, I got some really good gills from my first couple grows though, because I did a lot of reading and research before I even started growing. But anyway, so um, I did use the micro and grow because you use micro and grow when it's in its veg stage, and then you switch to micro and bloom when it's in its other stage. But you use different ratios when you do that. But this is the Lucas formula. It's actually a modified Lucas formula called, I think, the Heads formula. And then I think I modified a little bit from that just to, to suit what worked really good for me with cocoa watering every single day. Uh, so basically it works like this. Day 1 through 7, 2 milliliters of CalMag Plus, Epsom salts, 1 teaspoon, micro, 2 milliliters, bloom, 3 milliliters. The Epsom salts is, is necessary. Um, when you don't use it, you might notice some deficiencies and stuff and plants not being as happy. Day 8 to 15. Now, now what it means by day 1 through 7, again, day 1 is after it sprouts up out of the, out of the um, cocoa or out of your rock wool, whatever. And then it has that it has that first set of leaves. That leaves is a very okay. That very first there's a seedling here, right? When that seed breaks open, those first two leaves that come out are like rounded, right? They're they're the, they're the false leaves. Then you have another second leaves that comes up out of the middle of those and shoots up, and it sprouts out. And those have little spikes on. Those are true leaves. Excuse me. Once I see those true leaves sprout out, to me that's day one, and that's when I start watering with nutrients. Part of that I just water with pH water. Um, so ho hopefully that makes that clear. Um, actually, let me take that back. Um, even when it has false leaves, I start watering with this. Sorry, I start watering with this low amount because it's such a low amount of nutrients, it doesn't hurt it at all. So I'm sorry, I just I had to, I had to rethink about what I do. Uh, sometimes uh, I forget. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, do I water? I know I never water with regular water. So what am I talking about? Um, I used to a long time ago when it was during that time I used to water with spring water um, but then I switched it up and started watering with this right here right from the get go with whatever I'm using I day one to seven that's what I water with right away right when the right when it sprouts up and it breaks the seed off I start watering with that I know it sounds crazy like oh my gosh that's it's getting ppm so it's not that much it's like 200 ppm something like that it trust me it can handle it I've been doing this you saw me do this I did this for the Aldo ultimate and the ghetto grow and look it's fantastic the thing's doing awesome. Uh, so yeah, I did it with all the plants in there right now. And look at that Northern Lights in there. It's huge. I'm probably going to get like 10 ounces or more off that thing. Look at that Critical. Did the same thing with her. Started feeding her right from day one and right when she sprouted. And look how huge she is right now. She's gigantic. And man, I can't believe how huge she is. Right. So uh, days 8 through seven, eight, eight through 15, I do two, milli two milliliters of CalMag plus one teaspoon Epsom salts, uh, micro three milliliters, and bloom five milliliters. Now, if you don't know what... Um, the Floranova series is. I try to put pictures of the shit on here, but for some reason, I don't know, it kept giving me trouble. I'll, I'll try it again and see if it won't upload, but it wouldn't upload. But I'll show you what it looks like real quickly here. Anyway, but I'll, let me ex finish explaining this and then I'll show what each one looks like. Uh, then days uh, 16 to flower, um, this just means that once it starts pre-flowering, then I switch it over and I start adding the, uh, the, the high, or I start, actually, does it change? I don't know why I even changed this because nothing changes. Sorry, let me see here. Forgot the P there too. 
Okay, yeah, so in this particular formula, nothing changed. I don't know why I did this right here, because nothing changes. Um, so, yeah, that's it. From uh, day 16 of flour, 2 milliliters, and then 1 teaspoon, 6 milliliters of micro, 9 milliliters of bloom, and it remains the same all until it's finished. So it's a really sim it's really simple formula to use. I used it for, I think, a good year and a half, two years, and it, it works great for me. Right, now let me go ahead and show you what this shit looks like. So here we got Flora, uh, Flora series. I'll just type that. Hopefully it'll come up. Go to images here. Here we go. Yeah. So this is what the Flora series looks like. It looks like this stuff right here. So can you see that? This stuff right here. So that's what it looks like. Um, let me go ahead and mount my camera up just a little bit if you can see the top part. Right. So I only use these two right here. That's it. Now, you could use this one and this one, and you can measure it exactly the same way during um, its vegetative state. So all you'd have to do is go, hey, from day 16 to flower, just switch bloom to grow. Nine milliliters of grow. Uh, sorry, you can't see that. Let me scroll up here. That's all you do. So you change, you just change grow here. This would be grow, 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 and then bloom. So it'd be three milliliters of grow, five milliliters of grow, nine milliliters of grow, and then once you get to pre-flower, then switch over to bloom, nine milliliters of bloom, all until finish. So other than that, everything else would stay the same. That's the only thing you change is those three right there to grow. All right, so that's what that looks like. Let me show you what the Flora Nova series looks like. There's only two bottles, grow and bloom. If you use my first one on there, here's the Flora Nova, Flora Nova. So if you only use the, um, the Lucas formula, you're only going to need the bloom bottle. That's the cheapest way to grow with. Although, honestly, it's not, it's not really cheaper. It's just easier. Um, growing with both of them costs you a little bit more initially, but you're going to use the same amount ultimately over time. Um, that's for, so that would be for this top ones here. So for this one here, you just need the purple bottle. And for this Florida Nova series, you, need, you would need the uh, purple and green bottle. So that's the grow and the bloom. And then Coco's feeding chart. Let me show what Coco's looks like here. Type in Ray Kogos. Let's see if he's updated his site yet. Probably hasn't. I'm going to go to actual. I'm going to go to all. There we go. Ray Kogos. Here's his site. The original canvas formula. And let's see here. Products. And so, yeah, he still has this here. So this is his A and B formula. And so it's $200 just to get started. It's a gallon of each one, I believe. Um, I think that's how it works. Anyway, I didn't order this. Day. What I do is I just call him. Just go to contact, and then um, you, can, you can either contact him this way or just call his number. Now, um, he might be busy and say, hey, call me back, then just call him back. Just keep in mind when you call him, he's going to be talking a lot. He's going to try to talk to you about this and that and other thing and how he, he has a lot of knowledge, though, about growing. I don't agree with all of it, but um, he's very knowledgeable. And you'll be like, yeah, you know, everyone thinks this and that and other thing. Uh, but if you want to try his stuff, just be like, hey, I just want the one part liquid formula. He might try talking to the powder because it's cheaper to ship, whatever. Um, if you want to try the powder, that's fine. I have a buddy that uses the powder, and it seems to work good. Um, but the liquid, it it's already dissolved and everything for me, and uh, it doesn't clog up my, my system. So the main reason why I like it is because it's so clean, and it doesn't clog my system up. So that's why I use it. And it works really good. And it's actually it's actually cheaper for me to buy than buying the Flora Nova. So anyway, so just call that number and be like, hey, um, the rest numbers up here, the five one seven. Just call them and say, hey, uh, Neil, uh, con you know Neil from uh, Grow Pot Cheaply told me to call you and uh, request what he grows with, and he says he strictly likes to grow with just the one part formula. It's a green liquid, and that's all you want. You want uh, you know you can you can try to order just one bottle of it. But it looks like he hasn't set his site up yet to where he can take just 70, a seventy-five dollar order. So you might have, you know, end up paying a hundred dollars for it, um, or buy more than one bottle, like buy three bottles. And so that would be, um, it's still not even though, right? Because you would need it to be eight to be even. So you still be, you still be spending like a little bit more. What I did is I ordered three bottles, I think for um, two hundred or something like that. And he gave me a free bottle of the B formula, which you can finish your plants off with, which I haven't, I haven't done yet. But 
yeah, anyway, so it's you just want to try to find whatever even number it would be. It's a lot of bottles you have to order, but if you just want to order one bottle from him, you might have to spend $100 to get it. I'm not, you know, just ask him how he'll work, work it out with you. Um, but yeah, so that's that, folks. That's the different uh, stuff that I've used over the years. Um, I've, I've tried other stuff too. Um, I've tried, I've grown with Miracle Grow. Um, it, you definitely have to fl flush that stuff really good. It actually works pretty good. Um, I got some really good yields with Miracle Grow, but it's really harsh. Um, so you really want to make sure you flood it out really good um, when, when you're, you know, just feed with just sugar water for quite a while or just water um, for a while after the plants are done. But yeah, Miracle Grow actually works good. Another one that worked good, I really liked a lot. It's kind of expensive though. It's actually way more expensive than any of the stuff right here I'm talking about. And I buy it from Wilco and it's called um, Dr. What was that called again, babe? Dr. Earth, yeah. So it's called Dr. Earth. And uh, stuff is fantastic. It has all kinds of fantastic stuff in it. Worked really good. Um, but it's, it's, or, it's all organic. I, I like to use it outside. Um, I've also, yeah, you have to use quite a bit of it though. Um, and it's pretty expensive. Um, I've also used, uh, let's see here, what else did I use? Um, I used so much stuff over the years and tested and tried stuff. I love experimenting. So uh, I also used, uh, let me show you what Dr. Doc Earth looks like real quick. Might as well just show you what they look like so you know exactly which one I'm talking about. And again, I bought this at Wilco. And I grew an entire um, outdoor crop with this stuff. Sorry about that. That's my, one of my novels in the background. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Earth. Let's see if this shows up here under images. And I use the stuff for tomatoes so because they sell different stuff. Now, I've tried both their, um, this stuff here, the Dr. Earth for tomatoes and vegetables, the powder kind. The powder kind does go a little bit longer. Um, can you even see that? Sorry about that. This one right here. So the, uh, I don't know if you can see this, this one right here. So the powder kind, it lasts longer than the liquid kind. Um, and I just put it, I, I followed the directions exactly. And I just sprinkled it right on top of my soil. Then I just watered with, with my hose water outside with uh with well water you can also do use tap water and it works really good i i use a little bit of a uh, lime and stuff like that and it takes some time with growing with powders to get used to what you need to use in your soil to make sure it stays balanced and ph balanced if you're gonna use regular water um, but the liquid stuff was really great and it was already pretty much ph balanced and it hooks up with a bottle and i don't know i can't see it on here right now but uh the bottle hooks up right to the hose and just feeds it that way you can also get there this kind right here the pre-liquid kind that doesn't hook up to a hose, and you can just measure this and pour it right into your uh, bucket of water, whatever you're watering with. And uh, I, I would usually make like a 25 gallons of water at, time, at a time for outside in a big Walmart tote, a big sturdy one though that doesn't bend easily. And then I would take my five gallon bucket and pick up water and just dump it into my plants. I'd usually water them with five gallons at a time outdoors because they're bigger pots. Uh, let's see here, but it's uh, the stuff I'm thinking of that hooks up to your hose, I think is maybe this stuff here. I don't remember it looking that color though, but it was, anyway, I used, this is for, I mean, this might be the wrong kind. Anyway, I used the, it looks like that and it hooks up to your hose. Dr. Earth, let me see here, let's try liquid. Like I said, really expensive stuff, unless you use the powder. Oh, this right here is what I used, but it, I, it, that's for lawn fertilizers. That wasn't the exact one. Is this one here? Is that uh, all purpose? No, I didn't use the all purpose one. All purpose one I used a couple times uh, here and there when I felt like they were looking a little bit light green, then I would use this all-purpose one. But the one I'm looking for is the tomato one. I think it might be this one right here, the green one. Uh, and I use this uh, right here, this tomato one here. Um, so yeah, uh, but the powder kind, again, goes a lot longer. I've used Lillian something uh, powdered stuff, and that stuff works pretty good for outdoors. I, I've never used powdered indoors before. And then... Um, Another one I've tried, of course, Miracle Grow, and let me think of this other one I, I grew with. It's pretty good. Um, oh, I've used the uh, at the grow shop, um, and, and sometimes at Wilco they have them. There's like this powdered stuff, like one's called Bat Guano, and I forget the name of it right now. Let me go check. Hold on, I think I have a box of it left. I use this outdoors. Ah oh, man, not enough light here, but anyway, so this is the. Let me just grab these boxes and show you. So this is the uh, Lulian stuff I was talking about right here. So it's Lillian, tomato, vegetable food. Whenever you want it, whenever you buy stuff that you're not sure about, just buy the tomato food. Uh, tomatoes are very similar to grow than, as marijuana. It's a 5-10-10, so it's more of a, I think more of a flower, but it's pretty balanced. I mean, um, 
you might want to start out with something different than this and, and, and then like once they start flowering then switch to this stuff here works pretty good it's a powder I just, I just follow the instructions on it put it on top of my soil and then water with it for like two three weeks and then put more on it this stuff here I get at my grow uh, my grow shop you can also find it at Wilco sometimes it's just uh, there's different brands of it but it's just a powder form of seabird guano this just has that metal so I like adding a little bit of this during flower uh, along with something else to in order to boost up that middle that middle number it really helps you get those bigger larger buds uh, so that's what seabird guano is and then uh, another one I've used here as a starting point is this all-purpose it's uh, 462 I don't know if you can see that 462 come on focus on here there we go all-purpose na um, natural fertilizer it's all organic this is a 462 this is great to start this is down to earth is what it's called that's the name of the company and this is great to start out with uh, you just all you need is this right here um, a little bit of cow mag and then um, maybe a little bit of Epsom salt like a teaspoon of Epsom salt and it just all goes on top of the on top of the pot I'll show that in an outdoor grow sometime I'll just do a little small outdoor grow and I'll show you how I use the powdered formula for one of the, for at least one of the plants but yeah so I start with this right here usually that's my base and then I add a little bit of the Epsom salts and stuff and then as they start getting older I'll add the like a PK to it till it gets a higher PK or I'll switch to something else that already has a higher PK but I'll usually use like uh, seabird guano and bat guano together or something like that um, let me see do I still have the bat guano let me check here for a second here I thought I did. Uh, I can't find my back guano right now, but I do use blood meal sometimes. This is Garden Blooms blood meal. I get this. I got this at Wilco, and this has a high. Uh, you can see the, new, the nitrogen, and sometimes I'll use this. Just a little bit of this. When I notice if my plants are a little, a little bit, if they're still in the vegetative state and they're a little bit light green, I'll add a little bit of this, and boom, it just and a little bit more Epsom salts, and bam, it just brings them right back to nice and green. Unfortunately, I can't find the other thing. Also to if you're, you have to check your runoff sometimes, and if it if it's a little bit on the um, uh, on the lower side uh, or on the higher side, your it comes it comes out like eight or something like that. You just add a little bit of this on the top of your soil and water, and this will lower your soil's pH. This is basically sulfur, uh, but it's a good safe sulfur for your plants. If your stuff has come out a little bit low, or you just want to balance in general, right here, garden lime works really really great, and this is uh, basically just. Um, Oh, what is it? It's just lime, yeah. So, but it's a it's a nice garden lime that uh, averages really well. It raises your pH. It has a neutral of about seven. So, it's really good to put in your um, cocoa or soil if you're growing outdoors. All right, um, I'm gonna go show you one other thing I grow with um, real quick here on the line. Oh, there's my cute black kitty. He's so lovey. He likes to just love on me all the time. Sometimes it's irritating. All right, so the last one is Alaska. You can find this like all over Walmart, pretty much anywhere. Wilco has, I think, year round. Um, well, <laughs> guess I gotta put Alaska nutrients. There we go. And uh, I don't want facts, I just want Alaska nutrients. I'm trying to do this all with one hand here, real quick. Damn it. Put nutrition. Okay, so they, they sell different stuff here. I've never seen this one before, but um, I use this, the Bloom, like here's the, which one's this one here? So this is the normal one. This is your, what you use while it's in vegetative. And then, let's see this one out here that has one for Bloom. Okay, that's the, oh, that's the kind of expensive stuff. That's kind of good. I mean, kelp works really good. You really see, I liked using kelp outdoors. Um, really good stuff. This shit just stinks so bad. I don't. I won't grow with it indoors. Um, well, I can't say I won't for sure, but I don't like to because it stinks really bad. Cause it's fish fucking fish fertilizer. And then I think this is the bloom one. Let's see here. Yeah. So no, it's it's a zero ten ten. So you really can't just grow with like one by itself. Um, what I usually do is I'll grow with the. I don't think you see that. It's a five one one. So what I'll do is I'll add that to my plant um, for the first little bit of its life, and then I'll start adding a little bit of this to it. Um, not much, though. Just a little bit of this to it to add some of that uh, PK to it. And then when you get toward the flowering stage, I will use more of this 
and this right here together kind of balance it out to get like half and half so I'd use let's if I if I was using a let's say a, a shot glass full of this per five gallons of water or whatever then I'd use a shot a shot glass full of this it's been a long time since I've grown with this stuff so I'd have to look at the the back of it and see how much I want how much of it I want to use and I'll also have to like test the pH or excuse me the um, ppms or the EC so I, that's why I've been really leaning toward lately is EC so what I would do is I would you know put a little bit of the like let's say five gallons I would start with a shot glass of each and then see what the EC is at or what the ppms are at if they're too high then okay that's too much and then um I would pour that into another bucket like half of it and then start adding water to see what it needs to be at um, or, or I might even start with lower, like a half a shot of each one, uh, just to make sure I don't overshoot it, and then see what that's at. With these, though, you definitely always want to add one, a little bit of one to the other. At the very, very beginning of the plant's life, you can grow with just this, um, and then a little bit of Epsom salts, and a little bit of CalMag. I pretty much recommend CalMag for everything. It's like awesome. And then um, sh shortly after its life, I would start adding this to it. Uh, just a little bit at first and then like maybe like if I was using let's just say for example if I was using a shot glass of this at first in the very beginning of the life then when the plant is like I don't know seven you know 16 days old or so but it hasn't started pre-flowering then I would use like maybe one fourth shot glass of that so you know one fourth of what I'm using of this and then once I get toward the uh, pre-flower cycle when it starts actually flowering then I'll use half and half like but I mean it's a uh, equal amounts of both so if I was using a teaspoon of a teaspoon of this I'd also use a teaspoon of that hopefully that makes sense all right guys so that's how my feeding charts work and that's a little bit about how I feed and water um, again it's very important in the beginning of the beginning of the plant's life to water with only what is needed um, so that is that uh, and when it's very very small like in a, in a Rockwell cube, I just water with enough just to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out by the time I water it the next day. Again, because I only water once a day at that time. And then once I transplant it, I just water it with enough around it and I water it with enough water. And so those the, the, the recommended amounts on my feeding charts are, are just like base points, you know. Um, you really kind of have to use a little bit of common sense. You don't want to, you know, have it be so saturated all the time when it's young. And so I just water it with just enough to keep it saturated until the next watering for the next day. Once it reaches... A good size you know good age uh, for an auto flower once it reaches like day 17 or so then I'm watering it with a, a lot more water and getting a little bit of runoff um, so just just a little bit of runoff is all I need though and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it folks uh, hopefully that helps uh, if you guys have any more questions let me know I will be doing like I said I'm, I'm, a, I'm just trying to find the time um, I think with my next grow my new place I'm gonna do an entire step-by-step -step process uh, course on how to grow marijuana. Um, I'll probably start with how to grow regulars and then I'll do a separate course I think on how to grow autos. I mean they're, they're pretty much you can use the knowledge for both of them but there are some specific things I like to do with autos different than, than regulars but yeah. So it's going to be you know entire course step by step. I might even accomp accompany it with writing a book. I don't know. Book takes a lot of work. It really does. Um, so but that will be you know all professional professional mic sound um, if you've watched some of my recent asthma videos, like that kind of sound quality, like really good sound quality. Or actually, um, I would say watch one of my recent uh, art videos where I'm drawing by hand. And uh, you get a really good professional sound quality out of that. So I use like a $700 um, sound equipment and it uh, works really good. Really good, clear, clean, clear voice. But yeah, for, for that one, I'll be turning off all the fans, everything in the room when I'm, when I'm talking about stuff in the grow room. So that you can hear everything clearly without any background noise. And it'll be step by step. Um, it won't be all over the place. I'll have no rambling. It'll be like, hey, this is what you need to do now. This is what you need to do now. And it'll be broken up into little like five, ten, maybe twenty minute videos at the longest. And at each video will be on one topic and one topic only. So, yeah, I'll be explaining uh, when I when I do the feeding chart. I'll actually show step by step exactly how I'm doing it. This is how, hey, this is how you mix it. This is how you, like when I show my feeding chart, I'll be like, this is how much you mix. This is how you mix it. And then I'll then I'll show um, how much I water with exactly and why I water with that much. And whenever I do courses, I show always the how and the why I'm doing things because I think that's important. Because once you know the how and why to stuff, you can alter it to your own liking and um, you know like evolve it from there and, and make it your own. All right, guys. Again, double peace. Thanks for watching.